New Year. Right, still to come. Thank you. Uh, he's back on the road to help sort the nation's problem pooches. Graham Paul will be sharing his training secrets right after this. Welcome back. Still to come as reports emerge about another Downing Street party uh, taking place during the first lockdown. We'll be discussing that and the rest of today's top news stories. Now then, if you're struggling with a boisterous bulldog or a pesky poodle, there's only one man you need to call the dog father. Now, Graham Hall is once again tackling hellish hounds across the UK in the brand new series of dogs behaving very badly. Wait, oh. keep up, Graham! When the dog is a problem. One man can solve it. Well, this must really hack your neighbours off. Get down. He does love to hump Nanny. Frank? Uh, uh, no. He fixes our furry friends. Oh, no, he's off to the bird. She knocks me flying, I bang my head. <laughs> And their owners... I mean, the good news is I've got no problem at all with your dog. I'm going to have a problem with you. Oh, my goodness. Right, the dog father oh, wow. himself, otherwise known as dog behaviourist Graham Hall, joins us now. Lovely to talk Hi, to you. Graham. And we're just to start with one of the last things you said there. Um, uh, how much of a dog's issue, of, of all dogs' issues, are our fault? <laughs> Quite a bit. <laughs> it's always about that interaction between dogs and humans, you know. And when I first started this out, somebody uh, somebody said to me, uh, you can only fix the dogs through the people, which which is kind of right, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I don't just train dogs. It's kind of 20% yeah. dog training, 80% human training. Yeah, I bet. And, and you see from the clips there, I mean, these dogs have serious behavioural issues here, but what's so brilliant about what you do is that somehow you seem to be able to fix it relatively quickly, but the fixes last. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it's really important to keep things up after, you know, after you get on the right track. But often people have been getting it sort of spectacularly wrong, really, bless them, by the time I've turned up. And if they've been doing that for two years, dogs dogs are smart. So if you can get them on the right track. So, for example, if you had a dog that was, you know, we, we saw the big newfies there. Um, one of them was, was barking at people walking in the door, really being very imposing. But what was happening was they were going, you know, come on, good boy, good boy, good boy meaning please be a good boy because he's hearing good boy and they're giving him treats to try and get him to be quiet and so he's going oh so lunge and make a nuisance of myself and get rewarded for mm. it well i'll do more of that so wow. once you turn it round, dogs kind of see the light and uh, you say that even in the early days i'm assuming sort of around puppy stage if you do the sit and the wait that has a demo effect um on uh, like a domino type of thing on on the rest of the dog's behavior it can have yeah, it certainly can. I mean, the, the earlier you get things in, Phil, the, the, the better uh, it goes for the rest of their life. And I always always think if if you've got a puppy, and of course we don't all you know have the, the luxury of having a puppy from little. Sometimes we've got a rescue dog. But if you do have a little puppy, the earlier you can get some really good basic training in, the better. Um, and it, it just it, it just stays with them for life. Um, the, tonight's episode, uh, it's on at 8pm at Channel 5. You've got Frank the Frenchie, who's a little bit too friendly. <laughs> yeah, he's rather amorous, I think you should say. <laughs> but like, so, how uh, do you deal with something um, like that? Because that's not a, that's not a human oh, well, he problem. Like that, he's not doing that because of the way the parents of... I'm calling them parents. The owners have no. could no, done no, something no, wrong. Like, that's just within that dog to do that. Friend. Yeah, it, it, it is. And, and I'm going to say, it's a bit of a Frenchy thing, actually. I, just, I, I, maybe the French are famous for love, but uh, when it comes to French Bulldogs, <laughs> they they just love to greet people in that way. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, it, there is a sort of natural instinct to do it. The problem, though, is that what happens is we're all very polite, you know. So a dog does that to us, and he's he's happily giving it what for with your leg. And you're going, yeah, I know, mate, I know, hello, hello, hello. And he's like, they're loving this. They love it, humans, that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So what should you do? Just be like, no, stop it. Well, 
there's a limit to how much you can ignore, right? But it's it's kind of supercharged attention seeking. So you'll see tonight if you watch the show, you know how we got around it. But you, you've got to find better things to reward instead, and that that's often the secret, really. If I boil it down to one thing, it's choose the right moments to reward. <laughs> and sometimes we don't realise we're rewarding things. That's the point. Yeah, there's yeah. also uh, tonight is uh, uh, Harris, the cocker spaniel, who's addicted to swimming and ducks. Oh, so his yeah. problem is going to be. Uh, um, um, address there. Um, one of the things I read this morning uh, when we knew you were coming on is that, uh, and I never really thought about it, is lockdown, we know we've talked about separation anxiety from dogs and the fact that they were around there, um, the rest of the family for such a long time and then people went back to work and suddenly this is all very strange. One thing I didn't think about was delivery drivers, that during lockdown um, people couldn't come in unless you're in Downing Street people couldn't come in uh. um, and so um, so that means that uh, your dog was used to no one crossing the threshold yes you're absolutely right so so it, it was a double whammy effect for so what was happening was um, think of this from a dog's point of view right always a good thing um, so for, for the longest time when the when the full lockdowns were on we didn't have a visitor in the house so if you happen to be a young dog and you grew up through that time all you knew for your whole life was that nobody ever came in the house strangers visitors friends as we like to think of them didn't come in the house but on the contrary um, people came to the door they rang the bell uh, they delivered a parcel. At that point, you see, if your dog's barking and then the person goes away, which, of course, parcel delivery people do, the dog goes, aha, I got rid of him then. So time and time again, mm. he's going, right, I back, they run away. So if you could say to them, no, 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 you've misunderstood. That, that, no, it's not because you bark. The dog goes, no, 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 no. I think you'll find I barked, he ran away. What part of that don't you understand? <laughs> so, of course, the lockdown's their knees and what happens is we're inviting people in the dog's like no no this isn't right so we've got quite a few dogs who are either nervous of visitors or because of that getting a bit aggressive even when yeah. people walk in the door do, See, do you cover that in the in the series or or have you got a, a, a tip here that we could deal with uh, to sort that out yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it is there in the series if if you watch. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's do a quick tip now. Um, if you can if you can invite friends in and make them as sort of as less imposing as you can, basically get them in, get them to sit down, uh, and let the dog approach them because you've got to th again think of this from a dog's point of view. If you're nervous to strangers, um, a person comes in. Uh, and if they're a dog lover, the first thing they want to do is stroke the dog. Yeah. So all they see is this huge great hand kind of going, hello, mate, you all right, all right? You know, and it, it's scary. So if you sit them down, let the dog approach them, uh, if your dog's treat orientated, that person can then sort of drop the odd treat on the floor to start with, work up to getting them to take it from your hand. And then the dog's making a positive association. Oh, OK, visitors, not so bad. Actually, quite good. I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah, and then gradually it'll change. Um, obviously, the, the mm. show goes into so much depth, but you've got the tour as well, um, where you're going to be going around the country. First stage tour, people are invited to ask lots of questions. They do have to leave their dogs at home, however. But there you can really get, sort of, delve in a lot deeper. Yeah, absolutely. And and th that's the thing. Yeah, you're right. Sadly, yeah, do do leave your dogs at home, I'm afraid. Because you imagine a, a thousand unruly dogs uh, in a theatre. <laughs> it's I'm good, right? But I'm not that good. Yeah, <laughs> so, <not even> <laughs> so that's not possible. But um, uh, what we, we did was we took, a, you might say, a brave decision, really, to to give a big part of the show over to a live Q&A. So you can throw any questions at me uh, and I'll do my very best to answer. So Brilliant. quite an unusual kind of... Theatre too, you might say. Well, well that's got some questions uh, for you now. Forty-three dates starting in April. That's the uh, that's the tour. And as you say, any old question thrown in. So, Katie says, my American bull mastiff puppy Luna is very clingy with me and my partner. Hates when we leave her. Is there any way I can lessen her separation anxiety? Ah, bless. So this sounds like another kind of lockdown problem, right? So, uh, oh, look at her, bless her. Um, well, you you can just imagine um, if she's a slightly sort of nervy dog. You know, mum and dad have been around all the time. When you start to leave, either that's when you leave the house and go to the office, uh, or just sometimes it's when you leave the room, um, you've got a problem. So this is really about building up independence and getting across to her that, no, it's OK, you can be on your own. People go, people come back. So what I would do there is I'd start in the house, actually. If you've got a problem where she's she's anxious when you leave, pop out the room, 
give it a minute or two. And here's my top tip. Pop back in again when she's quietened down a bit because you get a rise and fall to the sound. So if you walk in when she's settled, she starts to understand, okay, crying doesn't bring them back, but it's not a problem because they go, they come back. And then you work your way up to, you know, going outside. So slowly, slowly, Lizzie says, Lindsay, sorry, my two young deer hounds pull so much that I can only walk one at a time. God forbid we see a cat. What should I do? Aha. Hello, Lindsay. Well, um, two, two deer hounds. Well, um, I'll take my hat off to you. Uh, oh, beautiful dogs, look. Yeah. Um, well, when you see them there, you, 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 not, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that deer, deer hounds are uh, related to greyhounds. So that means they're sight hounds and their, their brains and, and, and eyes are tuned in to anything that moves. So no surprise that they see a cat and it's shtump, off they want to go and get it. Um, I, I would um, practice this one dog at a time so you can focus. Um, and we haven't got really a lot of time right now to go into the detail, but you need the right bit of kit. You need the right technique. You might need a little bit of professional help, I think, because they're big, powerful dogs. OK, um, I've got a quick question for you. My Bailey, who is lovely in every single way, however, she's very lazy <laughs> and I find her really difficult to walk. You, you take know, her out for a drag, don't you? I literally do. It's an, it gets, oh. She just sits there and will not move. She'll lie down and I end up carrying her, which I know is really bad. The only way I can get her to exercise yeah. is if I take her to a dog park, let her off the lead, and then she runs around like a lunatic with other dogs. Right. So, um... She's basically doing that on her terms, isn't she? She's like, I'll run around when it suits me, but, you know, if you want to, Mum, I don't think so. Um, OK, a couple of things there. Um, so, one, uh, first thing, Holly, be careful you don't over-exercise her um, because with, with puppies, their joints are uh, they're a bit sort of susceptible when they're growing. So, um, a rule of thumb that vets have used for donkey's years is about five minutes per month of life, right? So, so no particular walk should be an hour or two, for example. That would be too much. But um, that having been said, um, I, I think encouragement's the way to go. Um, you you, you want to be really praising those great moments. So when she does walk, it's like, oh, yes, good girl. And that's when you can use a bit of excitement. Um, now, I'm quite big on keeping calmness to, to praise most of the time because I'm trying to keep a lid on badly behaved dogs. But when you get a dog that you need to lift a bit, when she is good, it's going to be, oh, yes, good girl. And if you're really struggling, Holly, um, pop her in the car, take her a street or two away from home, and usually you find that when you're walking them back to the house, yeah. they'll walk because that's where safety and food and all good things are. That then gives you something that you can praise. Okay. And any behaviour that you reward, you always get more of. All right, thank you. Thanks, thank you, thank you. I'll give Brilliant. that a go. Great thank to you talk much. to you. Uh, Dogs Behaving Very Badly is tonight at 8 on Channel 5, and as we said, the, the tour starts in April. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Right, still to come. As news of another lockdown...